Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We are in San Francisco. If you just left us, you left the story a few minutes ago with Jojo Foot. He's a musician, uh, just a very, very talented guy. I and mean, you just heard uh, where he's listening to right now, Devil Chase. Uh, welcome back, Jojo. So in San Francisco is where we left you. He's got eight, four brothers, four sisters, big Catholic, Irish Catholic family. They live in San Francisco. They're sharing one bathroom. How's that? How's that for an image? <laughs> um, it's a house full of music, a house full of love, it sounds like. And uh, uh, dad that appreciates jazz. What did your mom like to listen to? Uh, yeah, mom liked a lot of contemporary stuff, believe it or not. Huh? I mean, she liked the classic stuff of her generation but she also you know she liked the beatles and not the the hard edge bands but the ones that were you know more the singer songwriter types but um yeah. thank you yeah i mean she was she was really supportive of, of what we liked kind of but well, um so you guys weren't fighting over the radio or the the stereo or whatever too much it doesn't sound like it sounds yeah, like you guys um, appreciate it no, I mean, my dad had a pretty good sense of humor about it. He used to love to make fun of our music and, you know, and, and, and make up words to what he thought they were saying, which would be hilarious. <laughs> you know, I used to have friends that said, I just want to go over to your house so we can listen to your dad. And they would want to come over and get all, you know, they'd be all stoned and stuff. And they'd come over and want to, just to hear my dad <laughs> say weird stuff. So they'd be laughing, like, hysterically. I'm like, what's so funny, you know? It's just... You yeah, make up a, words to Led Zeppelin songs that would just have you in stitches. Yeah, you were saying before the break that um, your dad dad has these like old time old timey type sayings that are really corny. You got yeah, yeah. One for, I like them. Do you got another? You, you have a, um, I'm trying, trying to think. I know, uh, let me think. Well, uh, you know, when so I told you before, when someone says "wait," that's what broke the wagon down. He'd say, "Yeah, <laughs> um, hey, straws cheaper." Um, uh, whatever you would say. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say that he'd say that a lot if you said something serious. <laughs> um, you know, um, I don't, there was just a lot of them. I mean, uh, he, he would say, say for things like, you know, Washington's birthday would be a holiday. So now it's President's Day, but it was Washington's birthday. He would say it's, it, it's George Bertheton's wash day. You know, things like that. <laughs> okay. All right. So by the age of 13, you started writing your own songs and you were you started performing in local cover bands. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to kind of flash forward a little bit if you don't mind. Well, Please. actually, let me let me ask you, <laughs> were you alone when you were doing this? Were you popular? Like, were you one of those angsty teenage kids that's in the room writing and music and you know no, or, I mean, or I was, you, you know describe that time i was i was to be honest with you kind of um i wouldn't say a loner but i was kind of in a you know a little bit of a smaller click if you will if they were you know called clicks in high school um i was pretty self-conscious of my older brother doing the theater thing and he was very popular in high school so by the time I got there, I was, you know, someone's little brother. It was that more of that. But, you know, sometimes you can use that to your advantage, too. So, I mean, it was great for getting introductions to girls and things like that. So, right. oh, you're his brother. Yeah. Something like that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, no, I, I really, um, I mean, I, I didn't have any, you know, real bad issues, but I was, you know, kind of a loner in a sense. And, and it. A loner in the sense that I didn't hang with a big group of people. It was just a select few friends that were, you know, mostly musicians that, or that were into putting a band together and, and it became kind of like our little family, a little group and really didn't care about, you know, other cliques in school and things like that. I mean, you know, just wanted to make music. I knew what I wanted to do when I was 13. I wanted to do this. I had Would no you? desire to do anything else. Yeah. Which took you down the coast to Los Angeles. Um, yeah. and I was just thinking about my my own time in Los Angeles. I moved there when I was in my mid twenties, and and truthfully, I was a little scared because I I watched Colors and Training Day, those movies, you know, gangsters. Yeah. And um, now, 
I, you know, I realized how silly that was to be scared, but for all of its dirtiness and its crime and glamour and everything, I think there's something pretty uniquely special about LA. I mean, I really love LA and I, people say, what, how could you love LA? Um, I love what, that it's difficult. I love that it's sometimes easy. I, you know, I, in my mind, it's a, it's a, I would describe it as like a, a temptress of a city. <laughs> the streets are lined sure. with the palm trees. Yeah. You know, white stucco mansions. Um, but there's also this darkness behind its facade. Like it's, it's really, it's raw. It's real. Would you agree with that? I mean, yeah. Um, it's, you know, when I first moved down there, it, I was in a band called the missionaries. I, I was a, a co-writer in that band um, with another singer songwriter um zane drake and we put this band together and we got an opportunity we got a spec deal at first with a recording studio in la and um out of that we got a small record deal with uh when we were being courted by mca records and there were some issues with what they wanted to do with our demos and things like that you know they wanted how much interest there really was we don't know based on what they wanted to do if they did sign us how much control they had you know in other words we could have signed with them and they could have held on to our release for right. five years so we signed with a smaller record label called reality records and we put out one record and then when that band disbanded um in la i i stayed and you know started playing with other musicians and met more people and did a few session jobs and then i ended up playing with this folk singer frank she had been signed to island records and she was the first openly gay woman that um, got signed to a major label. So it was kind of, a, uh, you know, it sort of put her on the map in a different way than just the music, even though she was a really great singer. Um, and then I did a little tour with her and um, we did some shows. We actually did a run in New York for a while. We were there for like three weeks doing an, like an off Broadway, you would call it, but it was music, but it was sort of like, um, she did this whole Neil Diamond take and uh, it was just hilarious, but it was good. You know, it was really fun. Um, did that. And then uh, from there, after that tour, I came back to LA and um, joined a few other bands, um, did a lot of demo work. And then I met this Irish singer who I mentioned earlier, Emery Cullen and her and I, um, uh, started writing songs together and eventually she had a band and I played bass in her band, but I was also her co-writer for a lot of her songs. And then we, uh, she got a deal with Warner Chapel. And through that, we started to get songs in film, television. So it was kind of fun. I mean, we got to actually, you know, uh, watch the whole process of recording and getting it to film or TV. And uh, we did that for about four years together. Um, and then she went back to Ireland and she still actually performs to this day. She's, I think she's doing uh, uh, videos now where she's editing and producing, but um, well, yeah. Yeah. That sounds like, that sounds like an LA life as a musician. Yeah, I love, I love how musicians, especially in L, especially in LA can do session work or they can work on film or they can work on, commercials but then they can be in the you know then they're playing in their band on the weekend and or the, at night in the clubs and uh touring it's just i don't know it seems like there's a lot uh if you're if you hustle and you're good and you really want it you're you can find work as a musician and make a living and i was living on the beach which you cannot beat so <laughs> you were actually literally <laughs> living on the beach i was living on well, i was not 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 in the sand i, had... I was looking out of the tent or anything <laughs> <laughs> but I had a nice place on the beach that was like uh, I, I was sharing a uh, roommate with uh, my missionaries member band member. He had uh, gone on and done some solo stuff um, and I played with him for a little while. Um, but we shared a place on the beach. And I mean, you know, you could hear the waves out of your window at night, you know, and uh, it was just it was a really, really fun time. I look back on it very fondly. It was good times. Well, we're gonna we're gonna actually now now we're going inland. We're gonna take you to Nashville next. Yeah. Um. And so stay with us. We've got to actually take a quick break. We will come right back 
And let me tell you what you're going to go to break with. We um, came in with uh, Devil Chase, and we're going out with Bloom of a Rose. I really like this song. My special guest today, Jojo Foot. He's a music artist, songwriter, session player, Jojo Foot Band on Facebook. You can find them at Jojo Foot Band. And Foot is spelled F O O T E. On Instagram at Jojo Foot 98. On Bandcamp, Jojo Foot. He plays vocals, bass, and guitar. He's BMI affiliated and he's published, authored, and co wrote and recorded songs for Paramount, Disney TV, and Nickelodeon. And we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. 